The Book of Joshua Chapter 1 Now it happened after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot shall tread on, I have given it to you, as I spoke to Moses, from the wilderness and this Lebanon, even to the great river, the river Euphrates, all the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your border. There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life. As I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not fail you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage, for you shall cause this people to inherit the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous, to observe to do according to all the law which Moses my servant commanded you. Don't turn from it to the right hand or to the left, that you may have good success wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate thereon day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written therein. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall have good success. Haven't I commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the midst of the camp, and command the people, saying, Prepare food, for within three days you are to pass over this Jordan, to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God gives you to possess. To the Reubenites, and to the Gadites, and to the half-tribe of Manasseh, Joshua spoke, saying, Remember the word which Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, saying, The Lord your God gives you rest, and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall abide in the land which Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. But you shall pass over before your brothers armed, all the mighty men of valor, and shall help them, until the Lord have given your brothers rest, as he has given you. And they also have possessed the land which the Lord your God gives them. Then you shall return to the land of your possession and possess it, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you, beyond the Jordan toward the sunrise. They answered Joshua, saying, All that you have commanded us we will do, and wherever you send us we will go. According as we listen to Moses in all things, so we will listen to you. Only the Lord your God be with you as he was with Moses. Whoever he be who shall rebel against your commandment, and shall not listen to your words in all that you command him, he shall be put to death. Only be strong and of good courage. Chapter 2 Joshua the son of Nun sent out of Shittim two men as spies secretly, saying, Go, view the land and Jericho. They went and came into the house of a prostitute whose name was Rahab and lay there. It was told the king of Jericho, saying, Behold, there came men in here tonight of the children of Israel to search out the land. The king of Jericho sent to Rahab, saying, Bring forth the men who are come to you, who have entered into your house, for they have come to search out all the land. The woman took the two men and hid them, and she said, Yes, the men came to me, but I didn't know where they were from. And it happened about the time of the shutting of the gate when it was dark that the men went out. Where the men went out I don't know. Pursue after them quickly, for you will overtake them. But she had brought them up to the roof, and hid them with the stalks of flax which she had laid in order on the roof. The men pursued after them all the way to the Jordan, to the fords, and as soon as those who pursued after them were gone out, they shut the gate. Before they were laid down, she came up to them on the roof, and she said to the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land and that the fear of you is fallen on us, and that all of the inhabitants of the land melt away before you. For we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea before you when you came out of Egypt, and what you did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon and to Og, whom you utterly destroyed. As soon as we had heard it, our hearts did melt, neither did there remain any more spirit in any man because of you. For the Lord your God 
He is God in heaven above and on earth beneath. Now therefore please swear to me by the Lord, since I have dealt kindly with you, that you will also deal kindly with my father's house and give me a true token, and that you will save alive my father and my mother and my brothers and my sisters and all that they have and will deliver our lives from death. The men said to her, Our life for yours, if you don't utter this our business, and it shall be, when the Lord gives us the land, that we will deal kindly and truly with you. Then she let them down by a cord through the window, for her house was on the side of the wall, and she lived on the wall. She said to them, Go to the mountains, lest the pursuers find you, and hide yourselves there three days, until the pursuers come back, and afterwards you may go on your way. The men said to her, We will be guiltless of this your oath which you have made us to swear. Behold, when we come into the land, you shall bind this line of scarlet thread in the window which you let us down by, and you shall gather to you into the house your father and your mother, and your brothers and all your father's household. It will be that whoever will go out of the doors of your house into the street, his blood will be on his head, and we will be guiltless. And whoever will be with you in the house, his blood shall be on our head, if any hand be on him. But if you utter this our business, then we will be guiltless of your oath which you have made us to swear. She said, According to your words, so be it. She sent them away, and they departed, and she bound the scarlet line in the window. They went and came to the mountain and abode there three days until the pursuers were returned. And the pursuers sought them throughout all the way, but didn't find them. Then the two men returned and descended from the mountain and passed over and came to Joshua the son of Nun, and they told him all that happened to them. They said to Joshua, Truly the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land, and moreover all the inhabitants of the land do melt away before us. Chapter 3 Joshua rose up early in the morning. And they removed from Shittim and came to the Jordan, he and all the children of Israel, and they lodged there before they passed over. It happened after three days that the officers went through the midst of the camp, and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Don't come near to it that you may know the way by which you must go, for you have not passed this way before. Joshua said to the people, Sanctify yourselves, for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Joshua spoke to the priest, saying, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and pass over before the people. They took up the Ark of the Covenant and went before the people. The Lord said to Joshua, This day will I begin to magnify you in the sight of all Israel, that they may know that, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. You shall command the priests who bear the Ark of the Covenant, saying, When you are come to the brink of the waters of the Jordan, you shall stand still in the Jordan. Joshua said to the children of Israel, Come here, and hear the words of the Lord your God. Joshua said, Hereby you shall know that the living God is among you, and that he will without fail Drive out from before you the Canaanite, and the Hittite, and the Hivite, and the Parasite, and the Girgashite, and the Amorite, and the Jebusite. Behold, the ark of the covenant of the Lord of all the earth passes over before you into the Jordan. Now therefore take twelve men out of the tribes of Israel, for every tribe a man. It will come to pass when the soles of the feet of the priests who bear the ark of the Lord, the Lord of all the earth, shall rest in the waters of the Jordan that the waters of the Jordan shall be cut off, even the waters that come down from above, and they will stand in one heap. It happened when the people removed from their tents to pass over the Jordan, the priest who bore the Ark of the Covenant being before the people, and when those who bore the Ark were come to the Jordan, and the feet of the priest who bore the Ark were dipped in the brink of the water, for the Jordan overflows all its banks all the time of harvest that the waters which came down from above stood and rose up in one heap a great way off at Adam, the city which is by Zarathon. And those that went down towards the sea of the Arabah, even the salt sea, were wholly cut off. 
and the people passed over right against Jericho. The priest who bore the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord stood firm on dry ground in the midst of the Jordan, and all Israel passed over on dry ground until all the nation were passed clean over the Jordan. Chapter 4 It happened, when all the nation were clean passed over the Jordan, that the Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Take twelve men out of the people, out of every tribe a man, and command them, saying, Take out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, twelve stones, and carry them over with you, and lay them down in the lodging place where you shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the twelve men, whom he had prepared of the children of Israel, out of every tribe a man. And Joshua said to them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God into the midst of the Jordan, and every man of you take up a stone on his shoulder, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel, that this may be a sign among you, that when your children ask in time to come, saying, What do you mean by these stones? Then you shall tell them, because the waters of the Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord, when it passed over the Jordan. The waters of the Jordan were cut off, and these stones shall be for a memorial to the children of Israel forever. The children of Israel did so as Joshua commanded, and took up twelve stones out of the midst of the Jordan, as the Lord spoke to Joshua, according to the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. And they carried them over with them to the place where they lodged, and laid them down there. Joshua set up twelve stones in the midst of the Jordan, in the place where the feet of the priest who bore the Ark of the Covenant stood, and they are there to this day. For the priest who bore the Ark stood in the midst of the Jordan, until everything was finished that the Lord commanded Joshua to speak to the people, according to all that Moses commanded Joshua, and the people hurried and passed over. It happened when all the people had completely passed over, that the ark of the Lord passed over with the priest in the presence of the people. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh passed over armed before the children of Israel as Moses spoke to them. About forty thousand ready armed for war passed over before the Lord to battle to the plains of Jericho. On that day the Lord magnified Joshua in the sight of all Israel and they feared him, as they feared Moses all the days of his life. The Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Command the priests who bear the ark of the testimony, that they come up out of the Jordan. Joshua therefore commanded the priests, saying, Come up out of the Jordan. It happened when the priests who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord were come up out of the midst of the Jordan, and the soles of the priests' feet were lifted up to the dry ground, that the waters of the Jordan returned to their place, and went over all its banks as before. The people came up out of the Jordan on the tenth day of the first month, and encamped in Gilgal, on the east border of Jericho. Those twelve stones which they took out of the Jordan did Joshua set up in Gilgal. He spoke to the children of Israel, saying, When your children shall ask their fathers in time to come, saying, What do these stones mean? Then you shall let your children know, saying, Israel came over this Jordan on dry land. For the Lord your God dried up the waters of the Jordan from before you until you were passed over, as the Lord your God did to the Red Sea, which he dried up from before us until we were passed over. That all the peoples of the earth may know the hand of the Lord, that it is mighty, that you may fear the Lord your God forever. Chapter 5 It Happened when all the kings of the Amorites, who were beyond the Jordan westward, and all the kings of the Canaanites who were by the sea, heard how the Lord had dried up the waters of the Jordan from before the children of Israel until we were passed over, that their hearts melted, neither was their spirit in them any more, because of the children of Israel. At that time the Lord said to Joshua, Make flint knives, and circumcise again the children of Israel the second time. Joshua made himself flint knives, and circumcised the children of Israel at the hill of the foreskins. This is the cause why Joshua did circumcise all the people that came forth out of Egypt, who were males, even all the men of war, died in the wilderness by the way after they came forth out of Egypt. For all the people who came out were circumcised. 
But all the people who were born in the wilderness by the way as they came forth out of Egypt, they had not been circumcised. For the children of Israel walked forty years in the wilderness, until all the nation, even the men of war who came forth out of Egypt, were consumed, because they didn't listen to the voice of the Lord, to whom the Lord swore that he wouldn't let them see the land which the Lord swore to their fathers that he would give us, a land flowing with milk and honey. Their children, whom he raised up in their place, them did Joshua circumcise, for they were uncircumcised, because they had not circumcised them by the way. It happened when they had done circumcising all the nation, that they abode in their places in the camp until they were whole. The Lord said to Joshua, This day have I rolled away the reproach of Egypt from off you. Therefore the name of that place was called Gilgal to this day. The children of Israel encamped in Gilgal, and they kept the Passover on the fourteenth day of the month, at even in the plains of Jericho. They ate of the produce of the land on the next day after the Passover, unleavened cakes and parched grain in the same day. The manna ceased on the next day, after they had eaten of the produce of the land, neither had the children of Israel manna any more, but they ate of the fruit of the land of Canaan that year. It happened, when Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him with his sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went to him and said to him, Are you for us or for our adversaries? He said, No. But as prince of the host of the Lord, I am now come. Joshua fell on his face to the earth and did worship and said to him, What says my Lord to his servant? The prince of the Lord's host said to Joshua, Put off your shoe from your foot, for the place whereon you stand is holy. Joshua did so. Chapter 6 Now Jericho was tightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out, and none came in. The Lord said to Joshua, Behold, I have given into your hand Jericho, and the king of it, and the mighty men of valor. You shall circle the city, all the men of war, going about the city once. You shall do this six days. Seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark, and the seventh day you shall circle the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It will be that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people will go up every man straight before him. Joshua the son of Nun called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. They said to the people, Pass on and circle the city, and let the armed men pass on before the ark of the Lord. It was so that when Joshua had spoken to the people, the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord passed on, and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priest who blew the trumpets, and the rearward went after the ark, the priests blowing the trumpets as they went. Joshua commanded the people, saying, you shall not shout, nor let your voice be heard. Neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth, until the day I bid you shout. Then you shall all shout. So he caused the ark of the Lord to circle the city, going about it once, and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. The seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went on continually and blew the trumpets, and the armed men went before them, and the rearward came after the ark of the Lord, the priests blowing the trumpets as they went. The second day they circled the city once, and returned into the camp. So they did six days. It happened on the seventh day, that they rose early at the dawning of the day, and circled the city after the same manner seven times. Only on this day they compassed the city seven times. It happened at the seventh time, when the priest blew the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. The city shall be devoted, even it and all that is therein, to the Lord. Only Rahab the prostitute shall live, she and all who are with her in the house, 
because she hid the messengers that we sent. But as for you, only keep yourselves from the devoted thing, lest when you have devoted it, you take of the devoted thing, so you would make the camp of Israel accursed and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of brass and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted, and the priests blew the trumpets, and it happened, when the people heard the sound of the trumpet, that the people shouted with a great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. They utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, both young and old, and ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. Joshua said to the two men who had spied out the land, Go into the prostitute's house, and bring out there the woman and all that she has as you swore to her. The young men, the spies, went in, and brought out Rahab and her father and her mother and her brothers and all that she had. All her relatives also they brought out, and they set them outside of the camp of Israel. They burnt the city with fire and all that was therein, only the silver and the gold and the vessels of brass and of iron they put into the treasury of the house of the Lord. But Rahab the prostitute in her father's household, and all that she had did Joshua save alive, and she lived in the midst of Israel to this day, because she hid the messengers whom Joshua sent to spy out Jericho. Joshua charged them with an oath at that time, saying, Cursed be the man before the Lord that rises up and builds this city Jericho, with the loss of his firstborn shall he lay the foundation of it, and with the loss of his youngest son shall he set up the gates of it. So the Lord was with Joshua, and his fame was in all the land. Chapter 7 But the children of Israel committed a trespass in the devoted thing. For Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah, of the tribe of Judah, took of the devoted thing, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against the children of Israel. Joshua sent men from Jericho to Ai, which is beside beth on the east side of Bethel, and spoke to them, saying, Go up and spy out the land. The men went up and spied out Ai. They returned to Joshua and said to him, Don't let all the people go up, but let about two or three thousand men go up and strike Ai. Don't make all the people to toil there, for they are but few. So there went up there of the people about three thousand men, and they fled before the men of Ai. The men of Ai struck of them about thirty-six men, and they chased them from before the gate, even to Shebarim, and struck them at the descent, and the hearts of the people melted and became as water. Joshua tore his clothes and fell to the earth on his face before the ark of the Lord until evening, he and the elders of Israel, and they put dust on their heads. Joshua said, Alas, Lord God, why have you at all brought this people over the Jordan to deliver us into the hand of the Amorites to cause us to perish? Would that we had been content and lived beyond the Jordan. O oh Lord, what can I say? after that Israel has turned their backs before their enemies. For the Canaanites and all the inhabitants of the land will hear of it, and will surround us, and cut off our name from the earth. And what will you do for your great name? The Lord said to Joshua, Get up! Why are you fallen on your face? Israel has sinned. Yes, they have even transgressed my covenant which I commanded them. Yes, they have even taken of the devoted thing and have also stolen, and lied also, and they have even put it among their own stuff. Therefore the children of Israel can't stand before their enemies. They turn their backs before their enemies, because they are become accursed. I will not be with you any more, except you destroy the devoted thing from among you. Up, sanctify the people, and say, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, for thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, there is a devoted thing in the midst of you, Israel. You cannot stand before your enemies until you take away the devoted thing from among you. In the morning, therefore, you shall be brought near by your tribes, and it shall be that the tribe which the Lord takes shall come near by families, and the family which the Lord shall take shall come near by households, and the household which the Lord shall take shall come near man by man. 
it shall be that he who has taken with the devoted thing shall be burnt with fire, he and all that he has, because he has transgressed the covenant of the Lord, and because he has done folly in Israel. So Joshua rose up early in the morning, and brought Israel near by their tribes, and the tribe of Judah was taken. And he brought near the family of Judah, and he took the family of the Zerahites. And he brought near the family of the Zerahites man by man, and Zabdi was taken. And he brought near his household man by man, and Achan, the son of Carmi, the son of Zabdi, the son of Zerah of the tribe of Judah, was taken. Joshua said to Achan, My son, please give glory to the Lord, the God of Israel, and make confession to him, and tell me now what you have done. Don't hide it from me. Achan answered Joshua and said, Of a truth I have sinned against the Lord, the God of Israel, and thus and thus have I done. When I saw among the spoil a good Babylonian mantle, and two hundred shekels of silver, and a wedge of gold of fifty shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them. And behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent, and the silver under it. So Joshua sent messengers, and they ran to the tent, and behold, it was hid in his tent, and the silver under it. They took them from the midst of the tent, and brought them to Joshua, and to all the children of Israel, and they laid them down before the Lord. Joshua and all Israel with him took Achan the son of Zerah, and the silver and the mantle, and the wedge of gold, and his sons and his daughters and his oxen and his donkeys and his sheep, and his tent, and all that he had, and they brought them up to the valley of Achor. Joshua said, Why have you troubled us? The Lord shall trouble you this day. All Israel stoned him with stones, and they burned them with fire and stoned them with stones. They raised over him a great heap of stones to this day, and the Lord turned from the fierceness of his anger. Therefore the name of that place was called the Valley of Achor to this day. Chapter 8 The Lord said to Joshua, Don't be afraid, neither be dismayed. Take all the people of war with you, and arise, go up to Ai. Behold, I have given into your hand the king of Ai and his people, and his city and his land. You shall do to Ai and her king as you did to Jericho and her king, only the spoil of it and the cattle of it shall you take as a prey for yourselves, set you an ambush for the city behind it. So Joshua arose and all the people of war to go up to Ai. And Joshua chose out thirty thousand men, the mighty men of valor, and sent them forth by night. He commanded them, saying, Behold, you shall lie in ambush against the city, behind the city. Don't go very far from the city, but be ready. And I and all the people who are with me will approach to the city. It will happen when they will come out against us at the first, that we will flee before them, and they will come out after us until we have drawn them away from the city, for they will say, They flee before us as at the first, so we will flee before them. And you will rise up from the ambush, and take possession of the city, for the Lord your God will deliver it into your hand. It will be, when you have seized on the city, that you will set the city on fire, according to the word of the Lord shall you do. Behold, I have commanded you. Joshua sent them forth. And they went to set up the ambush, and stayed between Bethel and Ai, on the west side of Ai. But Joshua lodged that night among the people. Joshua rose up early in the morning, and mustered the people, and went up, he and the elders of Israel, before the people to Ai. All the people, even the men of war who were with him, went up and drew near, and came before the city, and encamped on the north side of Ai. Now there was a valley between him and Ai. He took about five thousand men, and set them in ambush between Bethel and Ai on the west side of the city. So they set the people, even all the host who was on the north of the city, and their liars in wait who were on the west of the city. And Joshua went that night into the midst of the valley. It happened, when the king of Ai saw it, that they hurried and rose up early, and the men of the city went out against Israel to battle, he and all his people at the time appointed before the Araba, But he didn't know that there was an ambush against him behind the city. Joshua and all Israel made as if they were beaten before them, 
and fled by the way of the wilderness. All the people who were in the city were called together to pursue after them, and they pursued after Joshua and were drawn away from the city. There was not a man left in Ai or Bethel who didn't go out after Israel, and they left the city open and pursued after Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, Stretch out the javelin that is in your hand toward Ai, for I will give it into your hand. Joshua stretched out the javelin that was in his hand toward the city. The ambush arose quickly out of their place, and they ran as soon as he had stretched out his hand, and entered into the city and took it, and they hurried and set the city on fire. When the men of Ai looked behind them, they saw, and behold, the smoke of the city ascended up to heaven, and they had no power to flee this way or that way, and the people who fled to the wilderness turned back on the pursuers. When Joshua and all Israel saw that the ambush had taken the city, and that the smoke of the city ascended, then they turned again and killed the men of Ai. The others came forth out of the city against them, so they were in the midst of Israel, some on this side and some on that side, and they struck them, so that they let none of them remain or escape. The king of Ai they took alive and brought him to Joshua. It happened when Israel had made an end of killing all the inhabitants of Ai in the field, in the wilderness in which they pursued them, and they were all fallen by the edge of the sword until they were consumed, that all Israel returned to Ai and struck it with the edge of the sword. All that fell that day, both of men and women, were twelve thousand, even all the men of Ai. For Joshua didn't draw back his hand with which he stretched out the javelin until he had utterly destroyed all the inhabitants of Ai. Only the cattle and the spoil of that city Israel took for prey to themselves, according to the word of the Lord which he commanded Joshua. So Joshua burnt Ai and made it a heap forever, even a desolation to this day. The king of Ai he hanged on a tree until the evening, and at the going down of the sun Joshua commanded, and they took his body down from the tree and cast it at the entrance of the gate of the city and raised thereon a great heap of stones to this day. Then Joshua built an altar to the Lord, the God of Israel, in Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded the children of Israel, as it is written in the book of the law of Moses, an altar of uncut stones, on which no man had lifted up any iron, and they offered thereon burnt offerings to the Lord, and sacrificed peace offerings. He wrote there on the stones a copy of the law of Moses, which he wrote in the presence of the children of Israel. All Israel and their elders and officers and their judges stood on this side of the ark and on that side before the priests, the Levites, who bore the ark of the covenant of the Lord, as well as the foreigner and the native, half of them in front of Mount Gerizim and half of them in front of Mount Ebal, as Moses the servant of the Lord had commanded at the first, that they should bless the people of Israel. Afterward he read all the words of the law, the blessing and the curse, according to all that is written in the book of the law. There was not a word of all that Moses commanded, which Joshua didn't read before all the assembly of Israel, and the women, and the little ones, and the foreigners who were among them. Chapter 9 It happened, when all the kings who were beyond the Jordan in the hill country, and in the lowland, and on all the shore of the great sea in front of Lebanon, the Hittite and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard of it, that they gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. But when the inhabitants of Gibeon heard what Joshua had done to Jericho and to Ai, they also resorted to a ruse, and went and made as if they had been ambassadors, and took old sacks on their donkeys and wineskins, old and torn and bound up, and old and patched shoes on their feet, and old garments on them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and was become moldy. They went to Joshua to the camp at Gilgal and said to him and to the men of Israel, We are come from a far country. Now therefore make a covenant with us. The men of Israel said to the Hivites, What if you dwell among us, and how shall we make a covenant with you? They said to Joshua, We are your servants. Joshua said to them, Who are you, and from where do you come? They said to him, 
from a very far country your servants are come, because of the name of the Lord your God. For we have heard the fame of him, and all that he did in Egypt, and all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites who were beyond the Jordan, to Sihon the king of Heshbon, and to Og king of Bashan, who was at Ashtaroth. Our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spoke to us, saying, Take provision in your hand for the journey, and go to meet them, and tell them, We are your servants, and now make a covenant with us. This our bread we took hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go to you, but now, behold, it is dry and has become moldy. And these wineskins which we filled were new, and behold, they are torn. And these our garments and our shoes are become old by reason of the very long journey. The men took of their provision and didn't ask counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Joshua made peace with them and made a covenant with them to let them live. And the princes of the congregation swore to them. It happened at the end of three days after they had made a covenant with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and that they lived among them. The children of Israel traveled and came to their cities on the third day. Now their cities were Gibeon and Shepherah and Beeroth and Kiriath Jarim. The children of Israel didn't strike them, because the princes of the congregation had sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. All the congregation murmured against the princes. But all the princes said to all the congregation, We have sworn to them by the Lord, the God of Israel. Now, therefore, we may not touch them. This we will do to them, and let them live, lest wrath be on us, because of the oath which we swore to them. The princes said to them, Let them live. So they became woodcutters and drawers of water to all the congregation, as the princes had spoken to them. Joshua called for them, and he spoke to them, saying, Why have you deceived us, saying, We are very far from you, when you dwell among us? Now therefore you are cursed, and there shall never fail to be of you bondservants, both woodcutters and drawers of water for the house of my God. They answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told your servants, how that the Lord your God commanded his servant Moses to give you all the land, and to destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you. Therefore we were sore afraid for our lives because of you, and have done this thing. Now behold, we are in your hand as it seems good and right to you, do to us. So did he to them, and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel, that they didn't kill them. That day Joshua made those woodcutters and drawers of water for the congregation, and for the altar of the Lord to this day, in the place which he should choose. Chapter 10 Now it happened, when Adonizedek, king of Jerusalem, heard how Joshua had taken Ai, and had utterly destroyed it, as he had done to Jericho and her king, so he had done to Ai and her king, and how the inhabitants of Gibeon had made peace with Israel and were among them, that they feared greatly, because Gibeon was a great city, as one of the royal cities, and because it was greater than Ai, and all the men of it were mighty. Therefore Adonizedek king of Jerusalem sent to Hoham king of Hebron, and to Piram king of Jarmuth, and to Japhia king of Lachish, and to Deber king of Eglon, saying, Come up to me and help me, and let us strike Gibeon, for it has made peace with Joshua and with the children of Israel. Therefore the five kings of the Amorites, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, gathered themselves together and went up, they and all their hosts, and encamped against Gibeon, and made war against it. The men of Gibeon sent to Joshua to the camp to Gilgal, saying, Don't slack your hand from your servants. Come up to us quickly, and save us, and help us, for all the kings of the Amorites that dwell in the hill country are gathered together against us. So Joshua went up from Gilgal, he and all the people of war with him, and all the mighty men of valor. The Lord said to Joshua, Don't fear them. For I have delivered them into your hands, therefore shall not a man of them stand before you. Joshua therefore came on them suddenly, for he went up from Gilgal all the night. The Lord confused them before Israel, and he killed them with a great slaughter at Gibeon, and chased them by the way of the Asin of Beth-horon, 
instruct them to Asaka and to Makeda. It happened as they fled from before Israel, while they were at the descent of Beth Horon, that the Lord cast down great stones from the sky on them to Asaka, and they died. And there were more who died with the hailstones than they whom the children of Israel killed with the sword. Then Joshua spoke to the Lord in the day when the Lord delivered up the Amorites before the children of Israel, and he said in the sight of Israel, Son, stand still on Gibeon, you, moon, in the valley of Ajalon. The sun stood still and the moon stayed, until the nation had avenged themselves of their enemies. Isn't this written in the book of Jashar? The sun stayed in the midst of the sky and didn't hurry to go down about a whole day. There was no day like that before it or after it that the Lord listened to the voice of a man, for the Lord fought for Israel. Joshua returned and all Israel with him to the camp to Gilgal. These five kings fled and hid themselves in the cave at Makeda. It was told Joshua, saying, The five kings are found hidden in a cave at Makeda. Joshua said, Roll great stones to the mouth of the cave, and set men by it to keep them. But don't stay, pursue after your enemies, and strike the hindmost of them. Don't allow them to enter into their cities, for the Lord your God has delivered them into your hand. It happened when Joshua and the children of Israel had made an end of killing them with a very great slaughter until they were consumed, and the remnant which remained of them had entered into the fortified cities, that all the people returned to the camp to Joshua and Makeda in peace. None moved his tongue against any of the children of Israel. Then Joshua said, Open the mouth of the cave, and bring forth those five kings to me out of the cave. They did so, and brought forth the five kings to him out of the cave, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon. It happened, when they brought forth those kings to Joshua, that Joshua called for all the men of Israel and said to the chiefs of the men of war who went with him, Come near, put your feet on the necks of these kings. They came near and put their feet on the necks of them. Joshua said to them, Don't be afraid, nor be dismayed. Be strong and of good courage, for thus shall the Lord do to all your enemies against whom you fight. Afterward Joshua struck them and put them to death, and hanged them on five trees, and they were hanging on the trees until the evening. It happened at the time of the going down of the sun that Joshua commanded, and they took them down off the trees, and cast them into the cave in which they had hidden themselves and laid great stones on the mouth of the cave to this very day. Joshua took Makeda on that day, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and the king of it. He utterly destroyed them and all the souls who were therein. He left none remaining, and he did to the king of Makeda, as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Makeda and all Israel with him to Libna, and fought against Libna. And the Lord delivered it also and the king of it into the hand of Israel. And he struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls who were therein. He left none remaining in it. And he did to the king of it as he had done to the king of Jericho. Joshua passed from Libna and all Israel with him to Lachish, and encamped against it and fought against it. And the Lord delivered Lachish into the hand of Israel. And he took it on the second day, and struck it with the edge of the sword and all the souls who were therein, according to all that he had done to Libna. Then Horam king of Geser came up to help Lachish, and Joshua struck him and his people, until he had left him none remaining. Joshua passed from Lachish and all Israel with him to Eglon, and they encamped against it and fought against it, and they took it on that day and struck it with the edge of the sword, and all the souls who were therein he utterly destroyed that day, according to all that he had done to Lachish. Joshua went up from Eglon and all Israel with him to Hebron, and they fought against it, and they took it, and struck it with the edge of the sword and the king of it, and all the cities of it, and all the souls who were therein. He left none remaining, according to all that he had done to Eglon, but he utterly destroyed it, and all the souls who were therein. Joshua returned and all Israel with him to Debir, and fought against it, and he took it and the king of it, and all the cities of it, and they struck them with the edge of the sword, 
and utterly destroyed all the souls who were therein. He left none remaining, as he had done to Hebron, so he did to Debir, and to the king of it, as he had also done to Libnah and the king of it. So Joshua struck all the land, the hill country, and the south, and the lowland, and the slopes, and all their kings. He left none remaining, but he utterly destroyed all that breathed, as the Lord, the God of Israel, commanded. Joshua struck them from Kadesh Barnea, even to Gaza, and all the country of Goshen, even to Gibeon. All these kings and their land did Joshua take at one time, because the Lord, the God of Israel, fought for Israel. Joshua returned, and all Israel with him, to the camp to Gilgal. Chapter 11 It happened, when Jabin, king of Hazor, heard of it, that he sent to Jobab, king of Maidan, and to the king of Shimron, and to the king of Akshaph, and to the kings who were on the north in the hill country, and in the Arabah south of Jenneroth, and in the lowland, and in the heights of Dor on the west, to the Canaanite on the east and on the west, and the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, and the Jebusite in the hill country, and the Hivite under Hermon in the land of Mizpah. They went out, they and all their hosts with them, many people, even as the sand that is on the seashore in multitude, with horses and chariots very many. All these kings met together, and they came and encamped together at the waters of Merom to fight with Israel. The Lord said to Joshua, Don't be afraid because of them, for tomorrow at this time I will deliver them up, all slain before Israel. You shall hamstring their horses and burn their chariots with fire. So Joshua came, and all the people of war with him against them by the waters of Merom suddenly and fell on them. The Lord delivered them into the hand of Israel, and they struck them and chased them to Sidon and to Misrephoth Maim and to the valley of Mizpah eastward, and they struck them until they left them none remaining. Joshua did to them as the Lord bade him. He hand-strung their horses and burnt their chariots with fire. Joshua turned back at that time and took Hazor and struck the king of it with the sword, for Hazor before was the head of all those kingdoms. They struck all the souls who were therein with the edge of the sword, utterly destroying them. There was none left who breathed and he burnt Hazor with fire. All the cities of those kings and all the kings of them did Joshua take, and he struck them with the edge of the sword and utterly destroyed them, as Moses the servant of the Lord commanded. But as for the cities that stood on their mounds, Israel burned none of them, save Hazor only, that did Joshua burn. All the spoil of these cities and the cattle the children of Israel took for a prey to themselves, but every man they struck with the edge of the sword, until they had destroyed them, neither left they any who breathed. As the Lord commanded Moses his servant, so did Moses command Joshua, and so Joshua did. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded Moses. So Joshua took all that land, the hill country, and all the south, and all the land of Goshen, and the lowland, and the Arabah, and the hill country of Israel, and the lowland of the same, from Mount Halak that goes up to Seir, even to Baal God in the valley of Lebanon under Mount Hermon. And all their kings he took and struck them and put them to death. Joshua made war a long time with all those kings. There was not a city that made peace with the children of Israel, save the Hivites, the inhabitants of Gibeon. They took all in battle. For it was of the Lord to harden their hearts to come against Israel in battle, that he might utterly destroy them that they might have no favor, but that he might destroy them, as the Lord commanded Moses. Joshua came at that time, and cut off the Anakim from the hill country, from Hebron, from Debir, from Anab, and from all the hill country of Judah, and from all the hill country of Israel. Joshua utterly destroyed them with their cities. There was none of the Anakim left in the land of the children of Israel. Only in Gaza, in Gath, and in Ashdod did some remain. So Joshua took the whole land, according to all that the Lord spoke to Moses, and Joshua gave it for an inheritance to Israel, according to their divisions by their tribes. The land had rest from war. Chapter 12 Now these are the kings of the land, whom the children of Israel struck, and possessed their land beyond the Jordan, toward the sunrise, 
from the valley of Arnon to Mount Hermon and all the Arabah eastward. Sihon, king of the Amorites, who lived in Heshbon and ruled from Arir, which is on the edge of the valley of Arnon, and the city that is in the middle of the valley, and half Gilead, even to the river Jabbok, the border of the children of Ammon, and the Arabah to the sea of Chinneroth eastward, and to the sea of the Arabah, even the salt sea, eastward, the way to beth Jesamoth, and on the south under the slopes of Pisgah, and the borders of Og king of Bashan, of the remnant of the Rephaim, who lived at Ashtaroth and at Edrai, and ruled in Mount Hermon, and in Salakah, and in all Bashan, to the border of the Gersherites, and the Machathites, and half Gilead, the border of Sihon king of Heshbon. Moses, the servant of the Lord, and the children of Israel struck them, and Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave it for a possession to the Reubenites, and the Gadites, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. These are the kings of the land whom Joshua and the children of Israel struck beyond the Jordan westward, from Baal Gad in the valley of Lebanon, even to Mount Halak, that goes up to Seir. And Joshua gave it to the tribes of Israel for a possession according to their divisions in the hill country, and in the lowland, and in the Arabah, and in the slopes, and in the wilderness, and in the south, the Hittite, the Amorite, and the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite, the, the king of Jericho, the king of Ai, which is beside Bethel, the king of Jerusalem, the king of Hebron, the king of Jarmuth, the king of Lachish, the king of Eglon, the king of Gezer, the king of Debir, the king of Geder, the king of Hormah, the king of Arad, the king of Libna, the king of Adullam, the king of Makeda, the king of Bethel, the king of Tapua, the king of Hefer, the king of Aphek, the king of Lasharon, the king of Madon, the king of Hazor, the king of Shimron Meron, the king of Akshaf, the king of Taanak, the king of Megiddo, the king of Kedesh, the king of Jokneam in Carmel, the king of Dor in the height of Dor, the king of Goim in Gilgal, the king of Tirzah, all the kings thirty-one. Chapter 13 Now Joshua was old and well stricken in years, and the Lord said to him, You are old and well stricken in years, and there remains yet very much land to be possessed. This is the land that yet remains, all the regions of the Philistines, and all the Geshurites, from the Shehor which is before Egypt, even to the border of Ekron northward, which is reckoned to the Canaanites, the five lords of the Philistines, the Gazites, and the Ashdodites, and the Ashkelonites, the Gittites, and the Ekronites, also the Avim, on the south, all the land of the Canaanites and Mierah, which belongs to the Sidonians, to Aphek, to the border of the Amorites, and the land of the Gebelites, and all Lebanon toward the sunrise, from Baal God under Mount Hermon, to the entrance of Hamath, all the inhabitants of the hill country, from Lebanon to Mishraphoth Maim, even all the Sidonians. Them I will drive out from before the children of Israel, only allot you it to Israel for an inheritance, as I have commanded you. Now therefore divide this land for an inheritance to the nine tribes, and the half-tribe of Manasseh. With him the Reubenites and the Gadites received their inheritance, which Moses gave them, beyond the Jordan eastward, even as Moses the servant of the Lord gave them. From Aroir, that is on the edge of the valley of Arnon, and the city that is in the middle of the valley, and all the plain of Medeba to Debon, and all the cities of Sihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, to the border of the children of Ammon, and Gilead, and the border of the Geshurites and the Machathites, and all Mount Hermon, and all Bashan to Salaka, all the kingdom of Og in Bashan, who reigned in Ashtaroth and in Edrei, the same was left of the remnant of the Rephaim. For these did Moses strike and drove them out, Nevertheless, the children of Israel didn't drive out the Geshurites, nor the Machathites, but Geshur and Machath dwell in the midst of Israel to this day. 
only to the tribe of Levi he gave no inheritance. The offerings of the Lord, the God of Israel, made by fire are his inheritance, as he spoke to him. Moses gave to the tribe of the children of Reuben according to their families. Their border was from Aroer, that is on the edge of the valley of the Arnon, and the city that is in the middle of the valley, and all the plain by Medeba, Heshbon, and all its cities that are in the plain, Debon, and Bamoth Baal, and Beth Baal Meon, and Jahaz, and Kedemoth, and Mephath, and Kiriathaim, and Sibma, and Zereth Shakar, in the mount of the valley, and Beth Peor, and the slopes of Pisgah, and Beth Jesamoth, and all the cities of the plain, and all the kingdom of Shihon, king of the Amorites, who reigned in Heshbon, whom Moses struck with the chiefs of Midian, Evi, and Rekim, and Zur, and Hur, and Reba, the princes of Shihon, who lived in the land. Balaam also, the son of Beor, the soothsayer, did the children of Israel kill with the sword among the rest of their slain. The border of the children of Reuben was the Jordan, and the border of it. This was the inheritance of the children of Reuben according to their families, the cities and the villages of it. Moses gave to the tribe of Gad, to the children of Gad, according to their families. Their border was Jazer, and all the cities of Gilead, and half the land of the children of Ammon, to Aroer that is before Rabbah, and from Heshbon to Ramath Mizpah, and Betonim, and from Mahanaim to the border of Debir, and in the valley Beth Haram, and Beth Nimrah, and Sukkoth, and Zaphon, the rest of the kingdom of Shihon the king of Heshbon, the Jordan and the border of it, to the uttermost part of the sea of Chenareth beyond the Jordan eastward. This is the inheritance of the children of Gad, according to their families, the cities and the villages of it. Moses gave inheritance to the half-tribe of Manasseh, and it was for the half-tribe of the children of Manasseh, according to their families. Their border was from Manhanaim, all Bashan, all the kingdom of Og, king of Bashan, and all the towns of Jair, which are in Bashan, sixty cities, and half Gilead, and Ashtaroth, and Edrei. The cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan were for the children of Machir, the son of Manasseh, even for the half of the children of Machir, according to their families. These are the inheritances which Moses distributed in the plains of Moab, beyond the Jordan at Jericho eastward. But to the tribe of Levi Moses gave no inheritance. The Lord, the God of Israel, is their inheritance, as he spoke to them. Chapter 14 These are the inheritances which the children of Israel took in the land of Canaan, which Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel distributed to them, by the lot of their inheritance, as the Lord commanded by Moses, for the nine tribes and for the half-tribe. For Moses had given the inheritance of the two tribes and the half-tribe beyond the Jordan, but to the Levites he gave no inheritance among them. For the children of Joseph were two tribes, Manasseh and Ephraim, and they gave no portion to the Levites in the land, save cities to dwell in, with the suburbs of it for their cattle and for their substance. As the Lord commanded Moses, so the children of Israel did, and they divided the land. Then the children of Judah drew near to Joshua and Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite, said to him, You know the thing that the Lord spoke to Moses, the man of God, concerning me and concerning you in Kadesh Barnea. Forty years old was I when Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought him word again as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brothers who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land whereon your foot is trodden shall be an inheritance to you and to your children forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. Now behold, the Lord has kept me alive as he spoke these forty-five years, from the time that the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel walked in the wilderness. And now, behold, I am this day eighty-five years old. 
I am as strong this day as I was in the day that Moses sent me, as my strength was then, even so is my strength now, for war, and to go out and to come in. Now therefore give me this hill country, whereof the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day how the Anakim were there, and cities great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall drive them out as the Lord spoke. Joshua blessed him, and he gave Hebron to Caleb the son of Jephunneh for an inheritance. Therefore Hebron became the inheritance of Caleb the son of Jephunneh, the Kenesite to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord, the God of Israel. Now the name of Hebron before was Kiriath Arba, which Arba was the greatest man among the Anakim. The land had rest from war. Chapter 15 The lot for the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families, was to the border of Edom, even to the wilderness of Zin southward, at the uttermost part of the south. Their south border was from the uttermost part of the Salt Sea, from the bay that looked southward, and it went out southward from the ascent of Akarabim, and passed along to Zin, and went up by the south of Kadesh Barnea, and passed along by Hezron, and went up to Adar, and turned about to Karka, and it passed along to Asmon, and went out at the brook of Egypt, and the goings out of the border were at the sea. This shall be your south border. The east border was the Salt Sea, even to the end of the Jordan. The border of the north quarter was from the bay of the sea at the end of the Jordan, and the border went up to Beth Hogla, and passed along by the north of Beth Arabah. And the border went up to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. And the border went up to Debir, from the valley of Achor, and so northward, looking toward Gilgal, that is over against the ascent of Adumim, which is on the south side of the river. And the border passed along to the waters of in Shemesh, and the goings out of it were at in Rogel. And the border went up by the valley of the son of Hinnom, to the side of the Jebusite southward, the same as Jerusalem. And the border went up to the top of the mountain that lies before the valley of Hinnom westward, which is at the uttermost part of the valley of Rephaim northward. And the border extended from the top of the mountain to the spring of the waters of Nephtoah, and went out to the cities of Mount Ephron. And the border extended to Bela, the same as kiriath Jerim. And the border turned out from about from Bela westward to Mount Seir, and passed along to the side of Mount Jerim, on the north, the same as Jesalon, and went down to Beth Shemesh, and passed along by Timnah. And the border went out to the side of Ekron northward, and the border extended to Shikaron, and passed along to Mount Bela, and went out at Jabneel, and the goings out of the border were at the sea. The west border was to the great sea, and the border of it. This is the border of the children of Judah round about according to their families. To Caleb, the son of Jephunneh, he gave a portion among the children of Judah, according to the commandment of the Lord to Joshua, even Kiriath Arba, which Arba was the father of Anak, the same as Hebron. Caleb drove out there the three sons of Anak, Sheshai, and Ahiman, and Talmai, the children of Anak. He went up there against the inhabitants of Debir. Now the name of Debir before was Kiriath Sefer. Caleb said, He who strikes Kiriath Sefer and takes it, to him will I give Aksha, my daughter, as wife. Othniel, the son of Kenaz, the brother of Caleb, took it, and he gave him Aksha, his daughter, as wife. It happened when she came to him that she moved him to ask of her father a field, and she alighted from off her donkey, and Caleb said, What do you want? She said, Give me a blessing, for you have set me in the land of the south. Give me also springs of water. He gave her the upper springs and the lower springs. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Judah, according to their families. The uttermost cities of the tribe of the children of Judah toward the border of Edom in the south were Kabzil and Eder and Jagger, and Kina and Dimona and Adada, and Kedish and Hazor and Ithan and Telim, and Baaloth, Hazor Hadada, Kirioth Hezron, the same as Hazor, Ammon, and Shema, and Molada, 
and Hazar Gada, and Heshmon, and Beth Belet, and Hazar Shual, and Beersheba, and Biziothia, and Bela, and Aim, and Ezem, and Eltolad, and Chesel, and Horma, and Ziklag, and Madmana, and Sansana, and Laboth, and Shilhim, and Aim, and Rimon. All the cities are twenty nine, with their villages. In the lowlands, Eshtaol, and Zora, and Ashna, and Zanoah, and Inganim, Tapua, and Inam, Jarmuth, and Adullam, Soka, Azeka, and Shaaraim, and Adithaim, and Gedera, and Gedorothaim, fourteen cities with their villages, Zinan, and Hadasha, and Migdal Gad, and Dilian, and Mispa, and Jokdiel, Lakish, and Boskath, and Eglon, and Kaban, and Laman, and Chidlish, and Gedroth, Beth Dagon, and Nama, and Makeda, sixteen cities with their villages, Libna, and Ether, and Ashan, and Ifta, and Asna, and Nezib, and Kela, and Akzib, and Maresha, nine cities with their villages, Ekron with its towns and its villages, from Ekron even to the sea, all that were by the side of Ashdod with their villages, Ashdod its towns and its villages, Gaza its towns and its villages, to the brook of Egypt and the great sea and the border of it, in the hill country, Shamir and Jatir and Soko, and Dana and Kiriasana, the same is Debir, and Anab, and Eshtemo, and Anim, and Goshen, and Holan, and Gilo, eleven cities with their villages, Ereb, and Duma, and Ishan, and Janim, and Beth Tapua, and Afeka, and Humta, and Kiriath Arba, the same as Hebron, and Zior, nine cities with their villages, Maon, Carmel, and Ziph, and Juta, and Jezreel, and Jokdiam, and Zanoa, Cain, Gibeah, and Timna, ten cities with their villages, Halhul, Besur, and Kedor, and Marath, and Bethanon, and Eltekon, six cities with their villages, Kiriath Baal, the same as Kiriath Jarim, and Rabbah, two cities with their villages, in the wilderness, Beth Ereba, Midden, and Sakaka, and Nibshan, and the city of Salt, and in Gedai, six cities with their villages. As for the Jebusites, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the children of Judah couldn't drive them out, but the Jebusites dwell with the children of Judah at Jerusalem to this day. Chapter 16 The lot came out for the children of Joseph from the Jordan at Jericho, at the waters of Jericho on the east, even the wilderness, going up from Jericho through the hill country to Bethel, and it went out from Bethel to Luz, and passed along to the border of the Archites to Ataroth, and it went down westward to the border of the Japhletites, to the, to the border of beth Horon the lower, even to Gezer, and the goings out of it were at the sea. The children of Joseph, Manasseh and Ephraim, took their inheritance. The border of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, was thus. The border of their inheritance eastward was Ataroth Adar, to beth Horon the upper. And the border went out westward at Michmathath, on the north, and the border turned about eastward to Tanath Shiloh, and passed along it on the east of Janoa. And it went down from Janoa to Ataroth, and to Nara, and reached to Jericho, and went out at the Jordan. From Tapua the border went along westward to the brook Ekana, and the goings out of it were at the sea. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Ephraim, according to their families, together with the cities which were set apart for the children of Ephraim, in the midst of the inheritance of the children of Manasseh, all the cities with their villages. They didn't drive out the Canaanites who lived in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell in the midst of Ephraim to this day, and are become servants to do forced labor. Chapter 17 This was the lot for the tribe of Manasseh, for he was the firstborn of Joseph. As for Mekir, the firstborn of Manasseh, the father of Gilead, because he was a man of war, therefore he had Gilead and Bashan. So the lot was for the rest of the children of Manasseh, according to their families, for the children of Abiezer, and for the children of Helek, and for the children of Asriel, and for the children of Shechem, 
and for the children of Hefer, and for the children of Shemida. These were the male children of Manasseh, the son of Joseph, according to their families. But Zelophehad, the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons, but daughters, and these are the names of his daughters, Mala and Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Tirsa. They came near before Eleazar the priest, and before Joshua the son of Nun, and before the princes, saying, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among the brothers of their father. There fell ten parts to Manasseh, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which is beyond the Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh had an inheritance among his sons. The land of Gilead belonged to the rest of the sons of Manasseh. The border of Manasseh was from Asher to Michmathath, which is before Shechem, and the border went along to the right hand, to the inhabitants in Intapua. The land of Tapua belonged to Manasseh, but Tapua on the border of Manasseh belonged to the children of Ephraim. The border went down to the brook of Cana, southward of the brook. These cities belonged to Ephraim among the cities of Manasseh, and the border of Manasseh was on the north side of the brook, and the goings out of it were at the sea. Southward it was Ephraim's, and northward it was Manasseh's, and the sea was his border, and they reached to Asher on the north, and Issachar on the east. Manasseh had an Issachar, and an Asher Bethshain and its towns, and Ibliam and its towns, and the inhabitants of Dor and its towns, and the inhabitants of Endor and its towns, and the inhabitants of Tanakh and its towns, and the inhabitants of Megiddo and its towns, even the three heights. Yet the children of Manasseh couldn't drive out the inhabitants of those cities, but the Canaanites would dwell in that land. It happened, when the children of Israel had grown strong, that they put the Canaanites to forced labor, and didn't utterly drive them out. The children of Joseph spoke to Joshua, saying, Why have you given me but one lot and one part for an inheritance, seeing I am a great people? Because hereto Yahweh has blessed me. Joshua said to them, If you are a great people, go up to the forest, and cut down for yourself there in the land of the Perizzites and of the Rephaim, since the hill country of Ephraim is too narrow for you. The children of Joseph said, The hill country is not enough for us, and all the Canaanites who dwell in the land of the valley have chariots of iron, both they who are in Bethshain and its towns, and they who are in the valley of Jezreel. Joshua spoke to the house of Joseph, even to Ephraim and Manasseh, saying, You are a great people, and have great power. You shall not have one lot only, but the hill country shall be yours, for though it is a forest, you shall cut it down, and the goings out of it shall be yours, for you shall drive out the Canaanites, though they have chariots of iron, and though they are strong. Chapter 18 the whole congregation of the children of Israel assembled themselves together at Shiloh, and set up the tent of meeting there, and the land was subdued before them. There remained among the children of Israel seven tribes, which had not yet divided their inheritance. Joshua said to the children of Israel, How long are you slack to go in to possess the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers, has given you? Appoint for you three men of each tribe, and I will send them, and they shall arise and walk through the land and describe it according to their inheritance, and they shall come to me. They shall divide it into seven portions. Judah shall abide in his border on the south, and the house of Joseph shall abide in their border on the north. You shall describe the land into seven portions, and bring the description here to me, and I will cast lots for you here before the Lord our God. For the Levites have no portion among you, for the priesthood of the Lord is their inheritance, and Gad and Reuben and the half-tribe of Manasseh have received their inheritance beyond the Jordan eastward, which Moses, the servant of the Lord, gave them. The men arose and went, and Joshua charged those who went to describe the land, saying, Go, and walk through the land and describe it, and come again to me, and I will cast lots for you here before the Lord in Shiloh. The men went and passed through the land, and described it by cities into seven portions in a book and they came to Joshua to the camp at Shiloh. Joshua cast lots for them in Shiloh before the Lord, and there Joshua divided the land to the children of Israel according to their divisions. The lot of the tribe of the children of Benjamin 
came up according to their families, and the border of their lot went out between the children of Judah and the children of Joseph. Their border on the north quarter was from the Jordan, and the border went up to the side of Jericho on the north, and went up through the hill country westward, and the goings out of it were at the wilderness of Beth Avim. The border passed along from there to Luz, to the side of Luz, the same as Bethel, southward, and the border went down to Ataroth Adar, by the mountain that lies on the south of Beth Haron the lower. The border extended there, and turned about on the west quarter southward, from the mountain that lies before Beth Haron southward, and the goings out of it were at Kiriath Baal, the same as Kiriath Jerim, a city of the children of Judah, this was the west quarter. The south quarter was from the uttermost part of Kiriath Jerim, and the border went out westward, and went out to the spring of the waters of Nephtua, and the border went down to the uttermost part of the mountain that lies before the valley of the son of Himnam, which is in the valley of Rephaim northward, and it went down to the valley of Hinnom, to the side of the Jebusite southward, and went down to Enrogel, and it extended northward, and went out at En Shemesh, and went out to Gilioth which is over against the ascent of Adumim, and went down to the stone of Bohan, the son of Reuben. And it passed along to the side over against the Arabah northward, and went down to the Arabah. And the border passed along to the side of Beth Hogla northward, and the goings out of the border were at the north bay of the Salt Sea, at the south end of the Jordan. This was the south border. The Jordan was the border of it on the east quarter. This was the inheritance of the children of Benjamin, by the borders of it round about, according to their families. Now the cities of the tribe of the children of Benjamin, according to their families, were Jericho, and beth Hogla, and amek Kaziz, and beth Ereba, and Zimraim, and beth and Avim, and Parah, and Ophra, and Shephar Ammoni, and Ophni, and Geba, twelve cities with their villages. Gibeon, and Rama and Biroth, and Mizpah, and Shifra, and Mosa, and Rikim, and Irpil, and Tarala, and Zela, Eleph, and the Jebusite, the same as Jerusalem, Gibeath, and Kiriath, fourteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Benjamin, according to their families. Chapter 19 The second lot came out for Simeon even for the tribe of the children of Simeon according to their families, and their inheritance was in the midst of the inheritance of the children of Judah. They had for their inheritance Beersheba, or Sheba and Molada, and Hasar Shual, and Bala and Azim, and Eltolad, and Bethu and Horma, and Ziklag, and Beth Markoboth, and Hasar Shusha, and Beth Laboth, and Sharuhin, thirteen cities with their villages. Ain, Rimon, and Ether, and Ashan, four cities with their villages, and all the villages that were round about these cities, to Baalath, Beer, Rama of the south. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Simeon according to their families. Out of the part of the children of Judah was the inheritance of the children of Simeon, for the portion of the children of Judah was too much for them. Therefore the children of Simeon had an inheritance in the midst of their inheritance. The third lot came up for the children of Zebulun, according to their families, and the border of their inheritance was to Sarid, and their border went up westward, even to Merilah, and reached to Dabasheth, and it reached to the brook that is before Jokneum, and it turned from Sarid eastward toward the sunrise to the border of Chislot Tabor, and it went out to Dabarath, and went up to Japhia, and from there it passed along eastward to Gath Hefer, and to Eth Kasim. And it went out at Rimon, which stretches to Nea. And the border turned about it on the north to Hanathon, and the goings out of it were at the valley of Iftael, and at Kata, and Nahalal, and Shimron, and Idala, and Bethlehem, twelve cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the children of Zebulun, according to their families, these cities with their villages. The fourth lot came out for Issachar even for the children of Issachar according to their families. Their border was to Jezreel, and Chesaloth, and Shinim, and Hafarim, and Shion, and Anaharath, and Rabith, and Kishion, and Ebez, and Remeth, and Inganim, and Inhada, and Beth-Pazaz. 
and the border reached to Tabor, and Shahazumah, and Beth Shemeth. And the goings out of their border were at the Jordan, sixteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of children of Issachar, according to their families, the cities with their villages. The fifth lot came out for the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families. Their border was Helkath, and Hali, and Betin, and Akshaf, and Alamalek, and Ahmad, and Mishal, and it reached to Carmel westward, and to Shehor Limnath, and it turned toward the sunrise to Beth Dagon, and reached to Zebulun, and to the valley of Iftael northward, to Beth Emek and Neil, and went out to Kabul on the left hand, and Ebron, and Rohab, and Haman, and Cana, even to Great Sidon, and the border turned to Ramah, and to the fortified city of Tyre, and the border turned to Hosa, and the goings out of it were by the sea of the region of Akzib. Uma also, and Aphek, and Rehob, twenty-two cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Asher, according to their families, these cities with their villages. The sixth lot came out for the children of Naphtali, even for the children of Naphtali according to their families. Their border was from Heleph, from the oak and Zaananim, and Adaminakeb, and Jabneel, to Lachem, and the goings out of it were at the Jordan, and the border turned westward to Asnot Tabor, and went out from there to Hukok, and it reached to Zebulon on the south, and reached to Asher on the west, and to Judah at the Jordan toward the sunrise. The fortified cities were Zedim, Zer, and Hamath, Rakath, and Chinnereth, and Adama, and Rama and Hazor, and Kadesh, and Adriai, and Inhazor, Iron, and Megdalel, Horam, and Bethanath, and Bethshemesh, nineteen cities with their villages. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Naphtali, according to their families, the cities with their villages. The seventh lot came out for the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families. The border of their inheritance was Zorah, and Eshtaol, and Irshemesh, and Shalabin, and Ajalon, and Ithla, and Elon, and Timna, and Ekron, and Elkteke, and Gibbethon, and Balath, and Jehud, and ben Eberach, and Gathrimon, and Merjakon, and Rakon, with the border over against Joppa. The border of the children of Dan went out beyond them, for the children of Dan went up and fought against Leshem, and took it, and struck it with the edge of the sword, and possessed it, and lived therein, and called Leshem Dan after the name of Dan their father. This is the inheritance of the tribe of the children of Dan, according to their families, these cities with their villages. So they made an end of distributing the land for inheritance by the borders of it, and the children of Israel gave an inheritance to Joshua, the son of Nun, in the midst of them. According to the commandment of the Lord, they gave him the city which he asked, even timnath Sherah in the hill country of Ephraim, and he built the city and lived there. These are the inheritances which Eleazar the priest, and Joshua the son of Nun, and the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel, distributed for an inheritance by lot in Shiloh before the Lord, at the door of the tent of meeting. So they made an end of the dividing of the land. Chapter 20 The Lord spoke to Joshua, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, Assign the cities of refuge, whereof I spoke to you by Moses, that the manslayer who kills any person unwittingly and unaware may flee there, and they shall be to you for a refuge from the avenger of blood. He shall flee to one of those cities, and shall stand at the entrance of the gate of the city, and declare his cause in the ears of the elders of that city, and they shall take him into the city to them, and give him a place that he may dwell among them. If the avenger of blood pursue after him, then they shall not deliver up the manslayer into his hand, because he struck his neighbor unaware, and didn't hate him before. He shall dwell in that city, until he stand before the congregation for judgment, until the death of the high priest that shall be in those days. Then shall the manslayer return, and come to his own city, and to his own house, to the city from whence he fled. They set apart Kadesh and Galilee in the hill country of Naphtali, and Shechem in the hill country of Ephraim, and Kiriath Arba, the same as Hebron, in the hill country of Judah. Beyond the Jordan at Jericho eastward, they assigned Bezer in the wilderness, 
in the plain out of the tribes of Reuben, and Ramoth in Gilead out of the tribe of Gad, and Golan in Bashan out of the tribe of Manasseh. These were the appointed cities for all the children of Israel, and for the stranger who sojourns among them, that whoever kills any person unwittingly might flee there, and not die by the hand of the avenger of blood, until he stood before the congregation. Chapter 21 Then came near the heads of the fathers' houses of the Levites, to Eleazar the priest, and to Joshua the son of Nun, and to the heads of the fathers' houses of the tribes of the children of Israel. And they spoke to them at Shiloh in the land of Canaan, saying, The Lord commanded Moses to give us cities to dwell in, with the suburbs of it for our cattle. The children of Israel gave to the Levites out of their inheritance, according to the commandment of the Lord, these cities with their suburbs. The lot came out for the families of the Kohathites, and the children of Aaron the priest, who were of the Levites, had by lot out of the tribe of Judah, and out of the tribe of the Simeonites, and out of the tribe of Benjamin thirteen cities. The rest of the children of Kohath had by lot out of the families of the tribe of Ephraim, and out of the tribe of Dan, and out of the half-tribe of Manasseh ten cities. The children of Gershon had by lot out of the families of the tribe of Issachar, and out of the tribes of Asher, and out of the tribe of Naphtali, and out of the half-tribe of Manasseh and Bashan, thirteen cities. The children of Merari, according to their families, had out of the tribe of Reuben, and out of the tribe of Gad, and out of the tribe of Zebulun twelve cities. The children of Israel gave by lot to the Levites these cities with their suburbs, as the Lord commanded by Moses. They gave out of the tribe of the children of Judah, and out of the tribe of the children of Simeon, these cities which are here mentioned by name, and they were for the children of Aaron, of the families of the Kohathites, who were of the children of Levi, for theirs was the first lot. They gave them Kiriath Arba, which Arba was the father of Anak, the same as Hebron, in the hill country of Judah, with the suburbs of it round about it. But the fields of the city and the villages of it gave they to Caleb the son of Jephunneh for his possession. To the children of Aaron the priest they gave Hebron with its suburbs, the city of refuge for the manslayer, and Libna with its suburbs, and Jatir with its suburbs, and Eshtemoa with its suburbs, and Holon with its suburbs, and Debir with its suburbs, and Ain with its suburbs, and Judah with its suburbs, and Beshemesh with its suburbs, nine cities out of those two tribes. Out of the tribe of Benjamin, Gibeon with its suburbs, Geba with its suburbs, Anathoth with its suburbs, and Almon with its suburbs, four cities. All the cities of the children of Aaron the priest were thirteen cities with their suburbs. The families of the children of Kohath, the Levites, even the rest of the children of Kohath, they had the cities of their lot out of the tribe of Ephraim. They gave them Shechem with its suburbs in the hill country of Ephraim, the city of refuge for the manslayer, and Gezer with its suburbs, and Gibzaim with its suburbs, and Beth Haron with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the tribe of Dan, Elteke with its suburbs, Gibbethon with its suburbs, Ajalon with its suburbs, Gathramon with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the half tribe of Manasseh, Tanakh with its suburbs, and Gathrimon with its suburbs, two cities. All the cities of the families of the rest of the children of Kohath were ten with their suburbs. To the children of Gershon, of the families of the Levites, out of the half tribe of Manasseh, they gave Golan in Bashan with its suburbs, the city of refuge for the manslayer, and Beshterah with its suburbs, two cities. Out of the tribe of Issachar, Kishion with its suburbs, Dabaroth with its suburbs, Jarmuth with its suburbs, Inganim with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the tribe of Asher, Mishal with its suburbs, Abdon with its suburbs, Helkath with its suburbs, and Rehob with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the tribe of Naphtali, Kadesh and Galilee with its suburbs, the city of refuge for the manslayer, and Hamothdor with its suburbs, and Kartan with its suburbs, three cities. All the cities of the Gershonites, according to their families, were thirteen cities with their suburbs. To the families of the children of Merari, the rest of the Levites, out of the tribe of Zebulon, 
Jokniam with its suburbs and Karta with its suburbs, Dimna with its suburbs, Nahalal with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the tribe of Reuben, Bezer with its suburbs and Jehaz with its suburbs, Kedamoth with its suburbs and Mafath with its suburbs, four cities. Out of the tribe of Gad, Ramoth and Gilead with its suburbs, the city of refuge for the manslayer, and Mahanaim with its suburbs, Heshbon with its suburbs, Jazer with its suburbs, four cities in all. All these were the cities of the children of Merari according to their families, even the rest of the families of the Levites, and their lot was twelve cities. All the cities of the Levites in the midst of the possession of the children of Israel were forty-eight cities with their suburbs. These cities were every one with their suburbs round about them, thus it was with all these cities. So the Lord gave to Israel all the land which he swore to give to their fathers, and they possessed it and lived therein. The Lord gave them rest round about, according to all that he swore to their fathers, and there stood not a man of all their enemies before them. The Lord delivered all their enemies into their hand. There failed not anything of any good thing which the Lord had spoken to the house of Israel. All came to pass. Chapter 22 Then Joshua called the Reubenites and the Gadites and the half-tribe of Manasseh and said to them, You have kept all that Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, and have listened to my voice in all that I commanded you. You have not left your brothers these many days to this day, but have kept the charge of the commandment of the Lord your God. Now the Lord your God has given rest to your brothers, as he spoke to them. Therefore now turn you, and get you to your tents, to the land of your possession, which Moses the servant of the Lord gave you beyond the Jordan. Only take diligent heed to do the commandment and the law which Moses the servant of the Lord commanded you, to love the Lord your God and to walk in all his ways, and to keep his commandments, and to cleave to him, and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul. So Joshua blessed them, and sent them away, and they went to their tents. Now to the one half-tribe of Manasseh Moses had given inheritance in Bashan, but to the other half gave Joshua among their brothers beyond Jordan westward. Moreover, when Joshua sent them away to their tents, he blessed them, and spoke to them, saying, Return with much wealth to your tents, and with very much cattle, with silver and with gold and with brass, and with iron and with very much clothing. Divide the spoil of your enemies with your brothers. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh returned and departed from the children of Israel out of Shiloh, which is in the land of Canaan, to go to the land of Gilead, to the land of their possession whereof they were possessed, according to the commandment of the Lord by Moses. When they came to the region about the Jordan, that is in the land of Canaan, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh built there an altar by the Jordan, a great altar to look on. The children of Israel heard say, Behold, the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh have built an altar in the forefront of the land of Canaan, in the region about the Jordan on the side that pertains to the children of Israel. When the children of Israel heard of it, the whole congregation of the children of Israel gathered themselves together at Shiloh to go up against them to war. The children of Israel sent to the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh and to the land of Gilead, Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest, and with him ten princes, one prince of a father's house for each of the tribes of Israel. And there were every one of them head of their father's houses among the thousands of Israel. They came to the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the half-tribe of Manasseh to the land of Gilead, and they spoke with them, saying, Thus says the whole congregation of the Lord, What trespass is this that you have committed against the God of Israel to turn away this day from following the Lord and that you have built you an altar to rebel this day against the Lord? Is the iniquity of Peor too little for us from which we have not cleansed ourselves to this day? although there came a plague on the congregation of the Lord, that you must turn away this day from following the Lord? And it will be, seeing you rebel today against the Lord, that tomorrow he will be angry with the whole congregation of Israel. However, if the land of your possession be unclean, then pass over to the land of the possession of the Lord, in which the Lord tents dwell, and take possession among us. 
but don't rebel against the Lord, nor rebel against us, in building you an altar besides the altar of the Lord our God. Didn't Achan, the son of Zerah, commit a trespass and the devoted thing, and wrath fell on all the congregation of Israel? And that man didn't perish alone in his iniquity. Then the children of Reuben and the children of Gad and the half-tribe of Manasseh answered and spoke to the heads of the thousands of Israel. The Mighty One, God, the Lord, the Mighty One, God, the Lord, He knows, and Israel He shall know, if it be in rebellion, or if in trespass against the Lord, don't save us this day, that we have built us an altar to turn away from following the Lord, or if to offer their on burnt offering or meal offering, or if to offer sacrifices of peace offerings thereon, let the Lord Himself require it. And if we have not rather out of carefulness done this, and of purpose, saying, In time to come your children might speak to our children, saying, What have you to do with the Lord, the God of Israel? For the Lord has made the Jordan a border between us and you, you children of Reuben and children of Gad. You have no portion in the Lord. So might your children make our children cease from fearing the Lord. Therefore we said, Let us now prepare to build us an altar, not for burnt offerings, nor for sacrifice, but it shall be a witness between us and you, and between our generations after us, that we may do the service of the Lord before him with our burnt offerings, and with our sacrifices, and with our peace offerings, that your children may not tell our children in time to come, you have no portion in the Lord. Therefore we said, It shall be, when they tell us, or to our generations in time to come, that we shall say, Behold the pattern of the altar of the Lord which our fathers made, not for burnt offerings nor for sacrifice, but it is a witness between us and you. Far be it from us that we should rebel against the Lord, and turn away this day from following the Lord, to build an altar for burnt offering, for meal offering, or for sacrifice, besides the altar of the Lord our God that is before his tent. When Phinehas the priest and the princes of the congregation, even the heads of the thousands of Israel that were with him, heard the words that the children of Reuben and that the children of Gad and the children of Manasseh spoke, it pleased them well. Phinehas the son of Eleazar the priest said to the children of Reuben and to the children of Gad and to the children of Manasseh, This day we know that the Lord is in the midst of us, because you have not committed this trespass against the Lord. Now you have delivered the children of Israel out of the hand of the Lord. Phinehas, the son of Eleazar the priest, and the princes, returned from the children of Reuben and from the children of Gad, out of the land of Gilead to the land of Canaan, to the children of Israel, and brought them word again. The thing pleased the children of Israel, and the children of Israel blessed God, and spoke no more of going up against them to war, to destroy the land in which the children of Reuben and the children of Gad lived. The children of Reuben and the children of Gad called the altar Ed, for they said, It is a witness between us that the Lord is God. Chapter 23 It happened after many days, when the Lord had given rest to Israel from all their enemies round about, and Joshua was old and well stricken in years, that Joshua called for all Israel, for their elders and for their heads, and for their judges and for their officers, and said to them, I am old and well stricken in years, and you have seen all that the Lord your God has done to all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God, he has fought for you. Behold, I have allotted to you these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribes, from the Jordan, with all the nations that I have cut off, even to the great sea toward the going down of the sun. The Lord your God, he will thrust them out from before you, and drive them out of your sight, and you shall possess their land as the Lord your God spoke to you. Therefore be you very courageous to keep and to do all that is written in the book of the law of Moses, that you not turn aside from it to the right hand or to the left, that you not come among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods, nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them, nor bow yourselves down to them but cleave to the Lord your God, as you have done to this day. For the Lord has driven out from before you great nations and strong, but as for you, no man has stood before you to this day. One man of you shall chase a thousand, for the Lord your God is he who fights for you, as he spoke to you. 
Take good heed, therefore, to yourselves that you love the Lord your God. Or else, if you do at all, go back and cleave to the remnant of these nations, even these who remain among you, and make marriages with them, and go into them, and they to you. Know for a certainty that the Lord your God will no more drive these nations from out of your sight, but they shall be a snare and a trap to you, and a scourge in your sides, and thorns in your eyes, until you perish from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Behold, this day I am going the way of all the earth, and you know in all your hearts and in all your souls that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spoke concerning you. All are happened to you, not one thing has failed of it. It shall happen that as all the good things that are come on you of which the Lord your God spoke to you, so will the Lord bring on you all the evil things until he has destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. When you disobey the covenant of the Lord your God which he commanded you, and go and serve other gods, and bow down yourselves to them, then will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you, and you shall perish quickly from off the good land which he has given to you. Chapter 24 Joshua gathered all the tribes of Israel to Shechem, and called for the elders of Israel, and for their heads, and for their judges, and for their officers, and they presented themselves before God. Joshua said to all the people, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, Your fathers lived of old time beyond the river, even Terah the father of Abraham, and the father of Nahor, and they served other gods. I took your father Abraham from beyond the river, and led him throughout all the land of Canaan, and multiplied his seed, and gave him Isaac. I gave to Isaac Jacob and Esau, and I gave to Esau Mount Seir, to possess it, and Jacob and his children went down into Egypt. I sent Moses and Aaron, and I plagued Egypt, according to that which I did in the midst of it, and afterward I brought you out. I brought your fathers out of Egypt, and you came to the sea, and the Egyptians pursued after your fathers with chariots and with horsemen to the Red Sea. When they cried out to the Lord, he put darkness between you and the Egyptians, and brought the sea on them and covered them, and your eyes saw what I did in Egypt, and you lived in the wilderness many days. I brought you into the land of the Amorites that live beyond the Jordan, and they fought with you, and I gave them into your hand, and you possessed their land, and I destroyed them from before you. Then Balak the son of Zippor, king of Moab, arose and fought against Israel, and he sent and called Balaam the son of Beor to curse you. But I would not listen to Balaam. Therefore he blessed you still, so I delivered you out of his hand. You went over the Jordan and came to Jericho, and the men of Jericho fought against you, the Amorite and the Perizzite, and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Girgashite, the Hivite and the Jebusite, and I delivered them into your hand. I sent the hornet before you, which drove them out from before you, even the two kings of the Amorites, not with your sword nor with your bow. I gave you a land whereon you had not labored, and cities which you didn't build, and you dwell therein. Of vineyards and olive groves which you didn't plant, do you eat. Now therefore fear the Lord, and serve him in sincerity and in truth, and put away the gods which your father served beyond the river and in Egypt, and serve the Lord. If it seem evil to you to serve the Lord, choose this day whom you will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were beyond the river, or the gods of the Amorites, in whose land you dwell, but as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. The people answered, Far be it from us that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. For the Lord our God, he it is who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage, and who did those great signs in our sight, and preserved us in all the ways in which we went, and among all the peoples through the midst of whom we passed. And the Lord drove out from before us all the peoples, even the Amorites who lived in the land. Therefore we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. Joshua said to the people, You cannot serve the Lord, for he is a holy God, he is a jealous God. He will not forgive your disobedience nor your sins. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you evil and consume you, after that he has done you good. 
The people said to Joshua, No, but we will serve the Lord. Joshua said to the people, You are witnesses against yourselves that you have chosen the Lord to serve him. They said, We are witnesses. Now therefore put away, he said, the foreign gods which are among you, and incline your heart to the Lord, the God of Israel. The people said to Joshua, The Lord our God we will serve, and to his voice we will listen. So Joshua made a covenant with the people that day, and set them a statute and an ordinance in Shechem. Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God, and he took a great stone, and set it up there under the oak that was by the sanctuary of the Lord. Joshua said to all the people, Behold, this stone shall be a witness against us, for it has heard all the words of the Lord which he spoke to us. It shall be therefore a witness against you, lest you deny your God. So Joshua sent the people away, every man to his inheritance. It happened after these things that Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died, being one hundred ten years old. They buried him in the border of his inheritance, in timnath Sarah, which is in the hill country of Ephraim, on the north of the mountain of Gaash. Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua, and all the days of the elders who outlived Joshua, and had known all the work of the Lord that he had worked for Israel. The bones of Joseph, which the children of Israel brought up out of Egypt, they buried in Shechem, and the parcel of ground which Jacob bought of the sons of Hamor, the father of Shechem, for a hundred pieces of money, and they became the inheritance of the children of Joseph. Eleazar the son of Aaron died, and they buried him in the hill of Phinehas his son, which was given him in the hill country of Ephraim.